Hello, this is Kent Beck. This is the uh, first episode in a series of three uh, illustrating TCR, the Test Commit Revert Workflow. TCR was invented a couple of years ago by Odman Strummer in a uh, workshop I was giving in uh, Oslo. I described a, a workflow that I'd been using where I ran tests, and if they passed, I made a little commit just so I could always get back to green easily. And he said, well, if you commit on save, you need to rev uh, commit on success. You need to revert on failure. And I thought it was such a horrible idea that I had to try it. So I did. We did together and discovered it has interesting properties, TCR does. It uh, creates, as you're about to see, a powerful incentive to make changes in tiny, tiny steps. And I always thought I was a tiny steps person, but uh, this is definitely the next level of that. The example program we'll be using is a data structure called Rope. And the idea is uh, if you want to edit a <clears throat> very large string, how can you insert a single character into the middle of it in constant time? And the answer is, I'll draw a little diagram here, uh, that we create an object that represents a substring of that gigantic string, but that object's a bounded size. And then uh, another one. And uh, then we can concatenate those together. So every time we type a character, we have to allocate these handful of objects. And then... Uh, um, uh, but that's all we have to do. It doesn't matter how big the underlying string is. We'll be able to save it, display it, and so on in the same amount of time. So uh, with that said, let's uh, on to the code. Uh, so, oh, so it's called, this data structure is called a rope because it's a bunch of strings put together. That's, yeah, computer science humor. So here we are with rope and uh, we want to implement insert and delete actually we're going to implement delete first but anyway and in order to do these two things we need to have a substring and concatenation so this is our little to-do list to do and there we go, that's, that's enough. So I'm just going to save that. <clears throat> well, look at the, uh, look at the little uh, sidebar for uh, uh, how this is implemented. Uh, we just ran this Python file, and since it succeeded, we, uh, we committed it. Uh, if we tr tried to check in some code that doesn't work, then we get the uh, the error over here, uh, but it just reverts to the previous version. So what that means is we're going to have to make our changes in teensy tiny little steps. Now, sometimes I work very much test first when I'm working with TCR, but sometimes not. It's much more fluid than test-driven development. But let's, uh, let's start that way. We want to... Let's say we, we want our rope to act as much like a string as it possibly can. And it won't look like it at first, but what, by the time the last episode is done, we will have stuff looking uh, pretty Python string-like. So we'd like a um, uh, the external API is going to, given a regular Python string, we're going to convert it to a rope. And then if we convert that back to a string, that should equal the same thing. Okay. So here's our, uh, this is our API. The whole thing is uh, def to rope string. And we're just going to return the string. This is going to pass. Now you're going to see a lot of this kind of fake it till you make it um, uh, in as we program. 
this isn't ex this isn't actually what I want, but I wanted this much code. This assertion is is what I wanted, and this declaration is what I wanted. And I want to, uh, to I don't want that to be at risk because they did something complicated here. You know, if I do something complicated and it doesn't work, then everything would disappear. But with the TCR, you're always uh, a, a quick shot away from things really uh, working. Because you just you get in a situation and say, ah, does this work? And you press save, and either it works or it's gone. It's kind of refreshing by the time you're done. Okay, so uh, the leaves of our data structure are just going to wrap strings. Um, so I'm going to say if I have a rope, and I pass a string to it, um, then I can create this class rope. And I give it a string. And I don't care at the moment. All I care about is this. Now this ABC is like this is uh, the simplest solution that I could think of because I this is five lines it's six lines of changes that's really easy to make a mistake oh and I did what error did I make here all right so now I'm gonna do that in a different order call rope uh, class rope pass yeah okay so that's that's okay here if I say rope. And I stir under. I'm not a Python person. I've maybe done a hundred lines of Python in my life. No, hundred hours of Python. Okay, okay. So now we're good. Now we can pass the string to it, which means we have to def under under in it under under. Uh, self comma string. That's that was my mistake. You pass. I think that should work. And now I can replace this with self dot. Whoops. Self dot string equals. You're going to be able to see all of my typos. And now if I return self dot string, everything should still pass. Okay. So there we go. Now the the external API is in place. Now, I would like to be able to get a substring. So if I said something like assert uh, to rope of A, B, C, D, E, you'll be seeing this, these characters a lot, that substring. And now I have to decide uh, what's the API. So I have a starting index and a length. You can do start and length or start and stop. I think start and length works pretty well there. And if I now convert this to a string, this should equal B, C, D, the string B, C, D. There we go. So def substring self comma start comma length and I'm just going to return BCD. There we go. Now, that works. Um, that's not ex actually what I want. What I want to return from this is a new kind of rope. So if I say, uh, s uh, which is a substring of this guy. So if I say, just return a substring. I do the same trick class substring is uh, def under under stir under under self return bcd that should work ah, yes it does woof and now I can pass the parameters the rope that this is a substring of start and length 
And now I need a constructor. Self rope start length. Oops, semicolon. Self dot rope. I mean, I could just. Anytime I'm worried, I can just do some little, do a little uh, uh, commit, save. If I have a problem, it goes away. If I don't have a problem, then I can go on from there. So self dot rope equals rope. Self dot start equals start, and self dot length equals length. Now, here, I can just for the moment, I can say convert the rope to a string and then take a so self.rope. This isn't really the implementation. This is uh, just something to get us a little closer to the imp imp implementation. Self.start colon self dot start plus self dot length there we go and this should pass <laughs> he says hopefully there we go gosh i love auto formatting it's so nice okay so really though this i want this to return a uh no i want this to return a rope and that's true. If I turn it into a string, that's it's fine if I call string on this. Um, but what if I have a substring of a substring? I should be able to do that. So uh, rope and substring should have a common superclass. But I kind of like that common superclass to be called rope. So I'm going to do this in stages. I'm just going to call this guy string. And this guy calls is called string. Yeah. And now I can have a class rope. And now I can move this definition of substring up into rope. And now I can subclass this. It's now the duplicate. And I can delete this implementation. And everything works. And now I can make substring into a rope too. And now I automatically get substrings of substrings. OK. Now I should have a test for that. Uh, let's do that. I expect this test to pass first time. And if I start one for one, this should just be the letter C. Okay, so this is, um, we're working on a substring. Uh, now concatenation, what does concatenation look like? I should be able to say something kind of similar. Uh, if I have ABC and I concatenate that with, concatenate that with two rope, DE, I should get ABCDE. Yeah. So we'll go up here and uh, def concatenate self. And uh, the right side. And uh, I'm just going to return ABCDE because I have an assertion and 
some code both pending right now. These red lines on the side are really helpful for this kind of work. If you get three or four sets of those, you, you've you definitely gone too far. You should just press save and have everything be deleted. Okay, so same kind of trick. Concatenation of two ropes is going to return a new rope. And class concatenation, which is a kind of rope. E. Woo! It worked. I I cheated a little bit and practiced this in the last couple of days. So uh, if yours don't doesn't if your TCR doesn't go this smoothly, uh, mine didn't either the first few times. Okay, so we need to make this uh, more precise. Uh, the left side of the concatenation, the right side of the concatenation def under under init uh, self left right pass yeah uh, self dot left equals left self dot right equals right and then under sure this is a stir of self dot left plus stir of self dot right and that should pass he says hopefully yes it does there we go and uh, now we have concatenation we have a, a super class with substring concatenation we have uh, subscreen and concatenation there these two subclasses and one that wraps the leaf elements. And we're on our way to being able to implement insert and delete. So uh, in the next episode, um, we'll go ahead and implement insert and delete. What we'll end up with won't look very Pythonistic. So the last episode will be incrementally approaching an API that looks much more like Python strings. And it turns out Python has fantastic resources to do that. So thank you very much for your time and attention, and I'll see you again next time.